Hello students, welcome to our e-learning channel. This is Shubhraslata Banerjee. Today I am giving you a lecture on Kamala Das, which is prescribed in the syllabus of BA third year English honor students, seventh paper, unit three. Kamala Das Kanda Suraya or Madhavi Kuti belongs to the first generation of modern Indian English poets who evolved a new poetics for, uh, the, for themselves and uh, a new start, both in theme and technique around 1960s. The first phase of Indo-Anglian poetry ended in 1950s and the new phase of Indian English poetry started in 1960s onwards. And Kamala Dash was perhaps uh, the most powerful voice in these post-colonial uh, chapters. Uh, her popularity in Kerala is mainly based on her short stories and autobiography, My Story, uh, 1977, which was published and uh, which is originally published in Malayalam language titled Ente Kotha uh, in 1973. And this book remains to date uh, best sellings of, of women autobiographies in India. Her overview in English is noted for her fiery poems and explicit writings and honest treatment of female sexuality free from any sense of guilt also marked her as an iconoclast in her generation. <clears throat> Kamala Das was born on 31st March 1934 at Poonar Kulam in a village of Malabar, South Kerala. Das's pa pa parental home was influenced by uh, Indian national movement led by Mahatma Gandhi. She started poetry at the age of six uh, and first poem, uh, her first poem was, uh, uh, from, as we gather from my story, was about a doll which uh, uh, lost her head and uh, had to remain headless for eternity. At the age of 15, Kamala Das was married to Mr. Madhav Das and her conjugal relationship was not happy or quite smooth. She had three sons and at the age of 15, 16, only 16, she, uh, her uh, first oldest son, MD Nalapath, was born, then Chinan Das. And in an interview, she said that she matured as a mother when her third son, Jai Suryas, was born. Though she was born in a conservative Hindu Nair family, she converted to Islam 1999 and assumed the name Kamala Shuraya. Thus, never politically active before she launched a national political party, Lok Sheba Party, aiming asylum to orphaned mothers and promotion of secularism. In 1984, she unsuccessfully constituted in Indian parliament elections. Her notable poetic collections in English are Summer in Calcutta, 1965, The Descendant, 1967, The Old Playhouse and Other Poems, 1973, and Only the Soul Knows How to Sing, 1996. She had also published a novel titled Alphabet of Lust, 1977. Two collections of her short stories in English are A Doll for the Child Prostitute, 1977, <clears throat> and Padmavati the Herald and other stories 1992 her collected poems were published in 1984 thus has written a number of miscellaneous essays with, with the following titles like um, I studied all men what women expect out of the marriage why not more than one husband I lived beautifully and all made her a controversial figure because uh, her views which she shared in her essays Das has received many awards for her literary contribution. She was nominated and shortlisted for Nobel Prize in 1984. She got Asian Prize in 1998. In 1999, Kent Award for English Writing from Asian Countries, Shaita Academy Award in 2003, Kerala Shaita Academy Award in 2005, Valor Award in 2001, and so on. On 31st May, 2009, aged 75, Kamala Das passed away at a hospital in Pune. Das has been labeled as a confessional poet and rightly so. She is largely subjective and autobiographical. As a confessional poet, Das writes in the mood and pattern of several new American poets like Robert Lowell, Anne Saxton, Sylvia Plath, Hilda Dudelil, John Berryman. All these poets are highly subjective and write with uh, considerable frankness and sincerity. 
in my story dash asserts that a poet's raw materials is not stone or clay but her own personality page number 165 now i want to discuss das's most frequently anthologized poem an introduction which is prescribed on your syllabus an introduction is a brilliant example of her confessionalism here she reveals her entire self with an extreme frankness she recorded her struggles sufferings uh, experience and ultimately the quest for identity an introduction was published in the first collection summer in calcutta in 1965 the poem does not follow any uh, particular pattern of rhyme or rhythm uh, let's see i'm show you the full poet poem on the screen here it is okay an introduction i don't know politics but i know the names of those in power and can repeat them like days of weeks or names of months beginning with nehru i am indian very brown born in malabar i speak three languages write in two and dream in one in the first section of the poem the speaker begins by campaigning uh, campaigning her knowledge of politic politicians to the days of weeks and months of the year although she does not have a uh, firm gaps on political itself those in power have remained in her mind and she recalls the name of nehru who served as india's first prime minister next the speaker moves on to describe her own being she claims herself as an indian with very brown and uh, uh, her complexions and quite confident and happy with her color these are the basic of her life of course not everything then she continues to describe language and the role it plays in her life i'm reading don't write in english they said english is not your mother tongue why not leave me alone critics friends visiting cousins every one of you why not let me speak in any language i like the language i speak become mine is distortions is queerness all mine mine alone actually she is judged for writing in english as it's not her mother tongue everyone criticizes her there is no one not her friend or cousins who back her up and she feels as if she is alone and she revolves by uh, revolves by saying uh, this that uh, why they cares what she speaks the language can't be defined as her own as her own uh, in uh, next line next 13 lines she desires for authenticity and honesty it's half english half indian funny perhaps but it's honest it is as human as i human i'm human don't you see it voices my joys my longings my hopes and it is useful to me as coin is to crows or roaring to the lions it's is human speech the speech of the mind that is here and not there a mind that sees and hears as is i ever she desires for authenticity and honesty her identity as seen through her voice is human just as she is human through her speech or text whatever it does tries to establish the control she has over her voice it can display all of her emotions and her mind that sees and hears and is ever the speaker defines her freedom through the use of her uh, voice it's intelligible unlike the roaring of a storm or the mutterings of blazing fire here and the a mind that sees and hears and it's ever not the deep blind speech of trees in storm or of monsoon clouds or rain or the incoherent utterance of the blazing funeral pyre i was child and later they 
I told me I grew, for I become tall, my limbs swelled, and once or two places sprouted here. When I asked for love, not knowing what else to ask for, he drew a youth of sixteen into the bedroom or closed the door. He did not beat me, but my sad woman body felt so beaten. Here, uh, some taboos, some norms, some rituals are imposed by society especially for women and Kamala Das always tried to break these taboos, these uh, uh, rituals, these uh, customs uh, and uh, uh, that's why she can't um, uh, tolerate the womanliness and she tried to escape from it and then she uh, wear uh, brother's trousers, uh, cut her hair short, okay and uh, uh, she, Human speech is humans. Uh, she never. Uh, she said that human speech is to human as roaring is to lions. Uh, it's uh, like the roaring of a storm uh, or the mute, uh, muttering of the blazing fire. The speaker defines her freedom actually. Her unhappiness is defined uh, this section that's directly related to a need for freedom. When she was young, she asked for love because she did not know what else to want. This ended with her marriage at 16 and the closing of a bedroom. Uh, although her husband did not beat her, uh, her sad woman body felt so beaten. This line of an introduction is interesting as she is placing her own body in one of the categorizes she rebelled against the first angel. It's due to this uh, simplification of a woman as nothing more than a body that led her to marriage at 16, only 16. She also places blame on her own body for leading her to this place. Her uh, distinctly female parts, uh, breasts and womb are, uh, are a crushing weight, mental shrinking. It was a pitiful process but it ended. She goes on to state that a change come over her. She decided to put on her brother's trouser and cut off her hair. The speaker is writing, uh, the speaker is uh, actually writing herself of the female image that has harmed her. Now that she is remarking her identity, she is able to say no to the tradition of womanhood. This including fitting is uh, fitting in and dressing in sharis, the categorizers might tell her not to peep in through our less dipped windows. Now I'm reading. Uh, when I asked for love, uh, not knowing what else to ask for, the drew a youth of 16 into the bedroom and closed the door, door. She did not beat me, but my sad woman body felt so beaten. The weight of my breast and womb crushed. I shrank pretty fully. Then I wore a shirt and my brother's trouser cut my hair short and ignored my womanliness. Dress in shari. Be girl. Be wife. They said. They her family, her society, always uh, try to uh, uh, make her women be embroidered, be cook, be a quarreler with servants. All are the qualities of women which society imposed. Fit in, oh, belong, cried the categorizers. Don't sit on a wall or peep in through our left trapped windows. Be Ami or be Kamala or better still be Mother Vikuti. It is time to choose name, a role, quest for identity. It's actually a quest for identity. Don't play pretending games. Don't play at schizophrenia or be a nympho. But I think Kamala Das was not schizophrenic. She is totally normal. When uh, a, a woman uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, establish her voice, uh, always society tried to uh, impose a title that uh, she is uh, schizophrenic or uh, characterless or uh, um, uh, um, uh, or is uh, not uh, able um, uh, to uh, establish herself. Uh, she is um, senior. Okay. These taboos, Kamala Dash uh, always tried to break these taboos and uh, of this patriarchal society. So I'm um, uh, in the next line, but she is not going to listen. She chose to move her life beyond the traditional and therefore expand her presence in the world. 
in the first uh, two lines of the next section and introduction it becomes clear that the speaker is truly meant to be the poet herself she wondered at her own identity and marvels over the face that she can now be be Ami or be Kamala or better still be Madhavi Kunti. It is by this final uh, final name that the poet Kamala Das came to be known and is still called. Uh, Das added another few reminders on behalf of the categorizers. She should not play pretending games or cry embarrassingly loud. Her role as women is supposed to be meek, quiet, timid and, um, and contained. She goes on to describe a time in which she met a loved man. This person is referred to as man. He is not named. Man, general, uh, in the, uh, general man. This trips him of some of the agency. He is so in control of in the next lines. Additionally, the name is of title importance as he is meant to represent every man in the world who uses every woman as he pleases. Okay, at, the, at one point, at the height of her emotions, she asks the man, who is he? Who he is? He replies, it is I. The I represents the agency he has in the world. Men make their own decisions and have the ability to use the pronoun in order to get what they want. Now, it's time for women. She also ha have the... Uh, rights to establish her uh, term I, her individuality. Now, be an infant. Don't cry embarrassingly loud when jilted in life. I met a man, loved him. Call him not by any name. He is every man who wants a woman, just as I am every woman who seeks love. It's quite natural things, okay? In him, the hungry has of fevers in me, the ocean's tireless waiting. Who are you? I asked each and every one. The answer is, it is I. It's I for men, I for women. Anywhere and everywhere I see the one who calls himself I. In this world, he is tightly packed like the sword in its shield. It's I who drink lonely, drinks at 12 midnight in hotels of strange towns. It is I who love. It is I who make love and then feel shame. It is I who lie dying with a rattle in my throat. I'm senior, I'm saint. I'm the beloved and the betrayed. I have no joys that are not yours, not eggs which are not yours. I too call myself I. An introduction begins its conclusion with the speaker acknowledging the constant presence of I around her. In the world, she is in the world, she uh, she is a part of. There are I uh, I uh, men everywhere she looks. A person of this nature is able to go and drink at twelve and stay in hotels of strange towns. As the lines continues, the the, the division between the speaker and the I is blurred. Eventually, a reader comes to understand that she is trying to come to uh, try to come to terms with her own independence and identity as both saint and sinner. She is trapped between her own need for a free life and the world which tries to keep her contained. The final statement is one of protest and resistance. Uh, resistance. Uh, uh, thus states that she has eggs which belong to no one but herself. She too can be I. And Professor K.R.S. Iyengar characterizes this piece as confessional and Devander Coley calls it a candid and witty piece of self-revelation. The poem is very rhythmic, rhythmical and towards the close becomes uh, incantatory. The third part of the poem is polyphonic text about identities which the autobiograph autobiographical voice of the first section multiplying itself into my red self. I am a million, million people talking all at once with voice raised in 
clamor, uh, sermon sales and so on. Here, the private self really gives way to the public selves, and then there is a final fusion of the two selves in the concluding assertion, I to call myself I. Thank you.